Hello, this is an air dried smear from a thyroid FNA, and this is a left thyroid nodule. So at low magnification, we can see that uh, the cellularity is relatively low, and that there is quite a lot of this uh, purplish colloid in the background. There are also some empty spaces, as you can see here. And whenever we see these in thyroid aspirates, we always um, wonder whether it was colloid that had slipped off during staining. Let's take a closer look. And when we look at this area, we can see that, for example, this tissue fragment actually comprises quite a few intact follicles that have been aspirated together. And many of these follicles are fairly large, as you can see here. Um, in the background, there's a little bit of colloid and there's also some flat honeycomb sheets. So moving over to here, we can see some loose monolayered sheets. The nuclei are very well spaced. There is no significant nuclear crowding. And I also want to highlight that if you look at the size of the nuclei in these honeycomb sheets and you compare them with the adjacent red blood cells, you'll see that the nuclei are quite similar in size to the red blood cells. Here again, they're only very slightly larger. And this is in contrast to papillary thyroid carcinoma, where the nuclei are quite a bit larger than red blood cells. They are usually at least twice the size and also they are more oval rather than round. There's also no significant nuclear overlapping or crowding here. So these are flat honeycomb sheets of follicular cells. And moving on, we can also see this purplish material that I'm going to zoom into. Over here, if you can just about make out, there are actually some darker lines, straight lines, or angulated lines running through. And this is what we call cracking colloid. So sometimes colloid has this cracking appearance. This is not specific to colloid. Um, you can also see it in non-thyroid aspirates sometimes, but in the context of a thyroid gland, where also you can see this material pushing apart the red blood cells, and also when they are flat sheets and macrofollicular structures, this does represent colloid. So we can see quite abundant colloid in the background. And... Taking a look at the alcohol fixed smear, we can see again these large tissue fragments. So do not get these confused with papillary structures because they can appear quite branching at low power. But when you zoom in, you can actually very clearly see the individual intact follicles. In contrast, a true papillary structure would have a fibrovascular core and you can see that the cells actually come off the fibrovascular core. Colloid can appear variable in color in the alcohol fixed smears. Here you can see it's a little bit orangophilic. Over here it's just pale blue gray. Sometimes it can appear greenish as well. And if you focus on this very nice honeycomb sheet of cells, um, you can again make out that the nuclei are quite small relative to the red blood cells and also you can just about see that there is this granular chromatin and this is very reassuring and is in contrast to the very pale and powdery chromatin that we would see in papillary thyroid carcinoma. So this is an example of a colloid nodule. We have intact tissue fragments composed of follicles we also have flat honeycomb sheets of follicular cells, and we have abundant thin colloid in the background. This would be classified in the Bethesda system into the benign category. Here are some additional pictures to show you the cracking appearance of colloid. This is the air dried smear, and here is the alcohol fixed smear. And here is another tissue fragment composed of these intact follicular structures, not to be mistaken for papillary structures. Here is a higher magnification view on the alcohol fixed smear. You can see a beautiful honeycomb appearance here of a macro follicle and some intact follicles with this colloid material superimposed on them. And just to appreciate the high magnification view, here is a flat honeycomb sheet from a colloid nodule where the nuclei are very round and the chromatin is quite granular. In contrast to 
a syncytial sheet of cells taken at the same magnification. This is taken from a case of papillary thyroid carcinoma, where the nuclei are much larger, and they are also more oval in shape, and you can see a very pale, powdery chromatin, and also prominent nuclear grooves. So this is a nice classical example of papillary thyroid carcinoma. And over here, we can actually see an intranuclear pseudo-inclusion. Thank you.